Burlesque Stripped Down, episode number 20. Welcome back to episode number 20. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally made it to number 20. This is, of course, Velvet Eau Claire, your guide to all of the sassy, sassy, sassy's not a word, sexy, saucy secrets of the ladies and gents behind the tassels. Sometimes we get some not so sexy secrets too, but those are important as well. Welcome back. I am here for a very quick down and dirty hot tips episode today. Um, and so let, I just really want to jump right in. This episode is based on a discussion that we started having over in the Burlesque Big Sister Brother Facebook group that we've talked about many, many times on this podcast. And we ha- uh, will be having Miss Diva Hollywood, who is kind of the, the goddess of this Facebook group. She'll be coming on the podcast in a couple weeks for an interview. But this, this, if you're not a member of this Facebook group, and if you've been listening for a while, you've heard me mention it a million times, and I don't know what you're waiting for. You should just get over and join the group because it's amazing. So the other day, uh, actually just yesterday, I was doing my habit of standing waiting for my kettle to boil for some tea, and I like to do my hip shimmies, right? I used to take some belly dance classes. I'm trying to get kind of back into it. I'm not a super um, big belly dancer, but I love it, and it's fun to take some of those moves. And they always say that you should do some of your you know, kind of hip shimmies and chest shimmies and things while you're doing things like doing dishes or in my case, waiting for the kettle to boil. So I was doing that just standing there at the counter shimmying away. And I just had this thought, um, just this question run through my head. I wonder what everybody else does. Wonder what everybody else does to kind of keep art going in their everyday life. I mean, we've talked in this podcast before about kind of keeping the music in your head and stuff like that, but I wanted to kind of hear some more um, about that. So I posted a question and we had a lot of responses and it was amazing. So I just today wanted to kind of read through some of those, maybe kind of spark um, a little inspiration for you, spark some ideas on some things that you can do outside of just your rehearsal time. Because as we know, it's great when we have an hour, two hours all day to be at our house or go to even a studio if we're especially lucky, we can go and rehearse and really, really work on our acts. But that's not, that's not the limit of where it goes. And for most of us who are artists, we wouldn't want that to be the limit anyway, right? We would, we want to keep things going in our everyday life. So there's lots of little tricks. I love some of these and I'm going to go through them. Um, thank you to everybody who did uh, respond and contribute. Um, I did try to find, and this, this will kind of harken back to last week's hot tips episode where we talked about the difference between Facebook uh, pages and Facebook profiles and which one you should have. So I will say that this is another con of having just a Facebook profile under your normal name and then a page with your uh, with your burlesque name is because you can only join groups as your personal profile. So we have a lot of people, myself included, who use our real names um, and our Facebook profile real names in the burlesque uh, big big sister brother group. So it gets a little tough sometimes to juggle those real names and the stage names. So I did for most of you, if you're listening and you did comment from your uh, personal profile, as you probably would have done, um, I did try to look for your your uh, burlesque name so I can credit you as, as such. But um, if I couldn't find it, um, you will just get your normal name shout it out to here. (laughs) Um, So let's go ahead and jump right in. Like I said, I mentioned my favorite habit, which is doing those hip shimmies when I am waiting for my kettle to boil, when I'm doing dishes, which doesn't happen all the time, but you know, when it happens, anytime I'm kind of waiting, sometimes when I'm even waiting in line, although it kind of depends on who's around out in public, but I try to do those. Those hip shimmies are something that I always struggle with because I tend to think too much about them. My brain like really focuses on them and what I'm doing right and wrong. So I'm really working on making it a habit of getting past that, getting out of my own head and just having it be more of a natural thing that I do. So for me, that was a huge one. So let me read a couple more for you. Uh, Miss Sarah Diva, Sarah Jane, she says that she is always doing this kind of stuff while she's doing laundry, while she's doing the dishes, while she's cleaning, even while she's uh, calming down her son. She's always dancing. So thank you, Miss Sarah Diva. Uh, I've got Chelsea Louise Hayden says that she works from home. So about every 10 minutes, um, I'm sorry, every 10 minute break that she takes out of two hours, she puts on some music and practice. She said it really gets her motivation going. 
which is awesome. And I imagine it also kind of gets that heart rate up too and kind of maybe even gives you more motivation, not only for your burlesque, but for your work as well. That's a good, I, I should probably take that because I do work from home. So thank you, Chelsea. I might take that into uh, advisement in my own life. Ophelia Bush says, I practice booty isolations on the bus on my commute and at my desk all day. She says that her ass hurts. <laughs> She's doing them all day long. We had a couple people that agreed with that, including Lucy Bridges and Tawny K. Loveday, um, saying that they're doing that all the time and they got that jiggle going now. <laughs> uh, we've got Fleur du Mall, um, who says that she does those booty isolations as well. She does them when it's quiet at her day job and she's mostly standing when she's there. And then she sometimes throws in some squats. So sometimes she's back there doing those booty isolations and some squatting at the same time. Very nice. I've got Yvonne, Evie McCracken. She says that she usually listens to whatever track she's working on to and from the station. That was something that my girls in Burlesque Mulan also wholeheartedly agreed with. They said they're always listening to that track, that music track over and over and over and over so that, and we've talked about this in the show before, so that it really gets down into your bones so that you really have it deep in there and you know every split second, every millisecond of that song. Cupcake Betty says, um, I practice bending over and picking stuff up all through the house. I love that idea. Kind of like doing the bend and snap. Just practicing when you're doing those things. You have to pick something up anyway, so you might as well do it burlesque style. She also adds that she practices her walk, smile, and how to be flirty. So just doing that at, at home, you may feel silly, but hey, if you're alone, who gives a fuck, right? Let's see. Uh, Victoria Vermouth says, this is amazing. She likes to throw her leg up on her desk at work and stretch while she types. So I just imagine, you know, coming around, seeing the beautiful Victoria with her leg, you know, way more flexible than me, although she probably got that way because she was doing these things at work, which I don't do. <laughs> so that's a great way to use that extra time while you're typing. See what kind of bendy movements you can get into. <laughs> The fabulous Kiki DeVille added in. She said, I've just started doing a new song that has finger click at the start, and I was practicing in the car the other day. She says that the people next to her at the uh, traffic lights probably didn't think she was as cool, but I'm sure we all would have thought if we had passed by her, it would have been amazing, right? So doing those snaps, those finger clicks, kind of those those sharp movements, you can practice in the car and do a lot of that. Lady Wildflower agrees wholeheartedly about the booty isolation. She adds that she does them on the train and when she's in bed and can't sleep. I think that's a fabulous tip because I tend to be very restless at night and then my brain is just going in circles and circles and circles. So that's probably a great way to do those kind of booty isolations or those other um, things that you can do laying down. Not only will it help you obviously improve on those moves themselves, but it gives you something really repetitive to do that will help probably, I imagine, lull your brain to sleep. So I'm going to remember that one as well. Amanda Dixie Kenner also agrees with that booty work while she's sitting at her desk. We all got to have nice booties, right? Yeah. Bethany Wingrove says that I, this one I love. She says, I try to think of a new and ridiculous creative way of taking off my jacket every time I come home. I also do the same with every other item of clothing. I think that's genius. And to be honest, maybe it's silly, but I've never really thought thought as much of doing that. It's easy, you know, I guess it's just usually when you get home, you're just in a hurry. Plus, I live in Florida. That's probably part of it. So there's not a lot of jackets. When I go back to Paris, I'll have to keep this in mind. <laughs> so try to challenge yourself maybe every time to come up with some new way to take off your jacket or your socks before you're going to bed or anything like that. Um, she says that she does that uh, at night. You know, she'll take her things off to take her makeup off and, and then seductively peel off. Uh, she says it's her unicorn hoodie and adventure time socks and then she strokes them against her face or wishes them around her head right all of these sexy things that you do and then you can kind of lay in bed and reflect on those new beautiful moves that you just make <laughs> christy taylor snell says that she does flow art so she always has her poi in her bag or her wand in the car so anytime that there's open space she just goes a little crazy i think it's amazing i'm sure it looks beautiful she also listens to her act tracks playlist while she works in rhinestones and oh she rhinestones at lunch as well so she really uses all of that time that she has Lolita Vavoom, of course, she seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths those booty isolations everywhere she is, waiting in line when she can't sleep, when she's at the city hall to fill out paperwork. So booty isolation seems to be the most popular answer here. So if you're not familiar with booty isolations, definitely check those out as something to do to help you practice your art and uh, give you something to do 
during kind of the off times when you're not rehearsing. But then there's my absolute favorite. And this is comes from Pixie O'Neill, who also has one of my favorite names in the world. <laughs> I think it's amazing. I just love the simplicity of this. Pixie says that she grinds on the filing cabinets and bumps the copy machine at work. Okay, I just love it because I just imagine, I don't know what kind of place you work at, Pixie, but I just imagine you in some kind of, you know, kind of, nothing boring, I'm sure, but just kind of, a, you know, an everyday office. And then the high point of everybody's day is anytime you go to the filing cabinet and you're like grinding up on it or, you know, bumping the copy machine every time you walk by. <laughs> But I think it's funny. And, and that's a great point of how we can just kind of make those these little routines. Every time you, you pass by the copy machine, do a little bump, something like that. Just be thinking about it throughout the day. It's so easy to kind of compartmentalize our lives into, well, now I'm working on burlesque. Now I'm traveling to work. Now I'm working my day job. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm relaxing. And it's really important that we try to incorporate, especially as an artist, all of these things together so that we can rehearse all the time. So thank you again to those of you who did comment on that post. And surprise, you got a little shout out on the podcast as well. It's amazing. So if you have any ideas on um, some other things that you do, I would love to hear them as well as any thoughts, of course, as always on the podcast, anything that we've had going on lately, you can email me velvet at burlesquestripdown.com. You can also head over to our website, burlesquestripdown.com. And over on the right hand side of any of the um, show notes pages, you'll see a little purple bar that says, leave me a message. And all you need is your computer, which hopefully if you live in this day and age has a microphone in it. And uh, you can leave up to 90 seconds of a voicemail for me that I may re er, play, not even read, but actual play your real voice on the podcast, unless you ask me not to, in which case I am more than happy to respect that. But I would love to hear from you. So definitely send me an email, leave me a voicemail. I will be back with you next week with an interview with my beautiful, darling, love of my life, Ava Valentina from my troupe Burlesque Moulin in Paris. So definitely have uh, check that out. Send me an email, share the love, and make sure to stay sexy. Mm-hmm.